The Dark Side of Living in Bradford, England Bradford is a city that is widely renowned for its variety and has a great deal of untapped potential. In fact, Bradford's inhabitants are exceptionally kind and hardy. To this point, such has been the impression that people have had of this city that is also a municipal administration area in West Yorkshire. This metropolitan borough encompasses a broad region which contains the cities and villages of Bingley, Denholm, Haworth and most likely Keithley, Queensbury, Chipley, Siltstone and Thornton. Other communities that are included in this metropolis county are Shipley, Siltstone and Thornton. This city has many positive qualities, such as its wonderful cuisine, stunning architecture and remarkable friendliness. Its population and geographic position are also factors that contribute to the city's attractiveness as a place to live. Despite the fact that Bradford has the potential to be a wonderful city, it has, according to a number of recent surveys, continued to be named as the most hazardous city in the United Kingdom. The racial unrest that occurred there in 2001 has left a lasting impression on its repute. Since the beginning of the three-day unrest that resulted in fatalities and hundreds of arrests, the focus of the nation's attention has been on the degree to which Bradford is now safe in comparison to the degree to which it is capable of being safe. It's quite dangerous. Bradford is well known for its variety but also for its very high crime rate. When you combine this with the fact that 28% of families struggle to make ends meet, you can see that there is a significant danger involved. Bradford, located in northern England, is home to more than 500,000 people. There are 13,300 crimes per 100,000 residents, making it one of the most dangerous cities in the nation. More than 20,000 cases of sexual assault and other violent crimes were reported in 2020, a number that is up slightly from 2019 and amounts to 6,100 per 100,000 people. Bradford's residents seem kind enough, but it's tough to call the place home or even pay it a visit and keep a grin on your face, given what lies just below the surface. That's really bad since there's unquestionably untapped potential. Why Bradford can be a miserable place to live in One cannot give a rating that is anything other than sad to a city in which unemployment rates are estimated to be about 35%. Because of this, it was recently placed in the second spot on the list of England's most undesirable places to call home. This is a very significant contributor to Bradford's status as one of the cities in which residents have the lowest quality of life. The 65% of the population that is already working are forced to shoulder the burden of an economy that cannot provide jobs for the remaining individuals. Because the typical gross weekly income in Bradford is about £450, the vast majority of individuals who are employed bring in relatively little wages. However, the cost of living is not particularly cheap. Rather, it is much greater than the cost of living in neighbouring regions with higher wages. Isn't it terrible enough to make a whole city feel down in the dumps? Nightlife Let us make an effort to tell you all we know about the reasons for the hatred that surround the identity of this city. However, we are unable to give every cause for the complaints and hatred that surround the name of this city. Yet we may begin with Bradford's lacklustre nightlife. In order to get any kind of a social life, you have to drive quite a distance. It's possible that the residents of Bradford feel uncomfortable with the large number of drug addicts living in their city. They reach such a consensus that they tacitly agree not to patronise nightclubs as a result. Whoever the drug addicts are in this metropolis, they are flaunting their contraband and strutting about in flashy automobiles that they purchased with the money they made from the illicit trade. You would anticipate the city to be hazardous given its atmosphere, which is characterised by the widespread availability of narcotics, as well as a number of other social ills, wouldn't you say? Rates of criminal activity in comparison to the average for the country. How does Bradford's rate of violent and property crime stack up against the national average? The present rate of crime in Bradford is presently 185% above the national average, which takes into account the towns, counties and villages located across England, Wales and Northern Ireland as a whole. In recent times, Bradford has been ranked the most unsafe city in the United Kingdom. It seems that the pace at which crime is increasing in Bradford is around 30% less than the rate at which crime is increasing on a national level. On the other hand, the rate of violent offences in Bradford is just 75% of the national median for the entire year. There is a risk of being a target of violent criminality in Bradford at the rate of one in every 62 residents. 
According to a trustworthy source, 41% of all crimes that have been recorded in the postcode region fall under the category of violent crime. In the 12 months beginning in May 2021 and ending in April 2022, the rate of violent crime in the region was 42.9%, which equates to 177 of the national crime rate. For instance, stealing from a person was the kind of crime that was increasing at the quickest rate during that time period. The rate of theft in England, Wales and Northern Ireland rose by 45.8% over the course of the previous year. Bradford is ranked as the third most hazardous city in the country as a whole, based on yet another study. In addition to this, it is the 256th most hazardous location throughout all of the towns, cities and villages that make up the United Kingdom's three categories. Antisocial behaviours It was a feeling of unfairness that infuriated Bradford's young Muslims in 2001, and it is still responsible for many of them harbouring resentment and hostility toward authority today at how their parents were regarded as residents of a lower class, how they were forced to work long hours for poor money, and how they were forced to take racial remarks with stride, and at how the younger generation, which had little hope of finding jobs of their own, was frequently hounded and mistreated by their own police department. Because their own police force did not do enough to crack down on the far right, the younger generation felt that it was their responsibility to enforce the law matters themselves. The protests were a battle cry over inequity and decades of racist behaviour that the elder generation had endured but that the younger generation's kids could no longer tolerate. The older population had taken the assault but the youngsters just couldn't. Weather in Bradford In general, Bradford's summers are quite hot, while the winters are rather cold. Bradford's winters are not as harsh as those on the other parts of the British island and the summers are not as hot as those there but the weather in Bradford is becoming more unpredictable. The winters are becoming wetter and not as cold as they used to be, while the summers are getting warmer and drier. Last year, it rained for almost 200 days out of the total of 365. Such climate-induced weather patterns cause urban flooding and make it difficult for citizens to live and dwell in sometimes. Pollution in Bradford in Bradford in the year 2020, the number of deaths attributed to particulate air pollution was 191. The most recent findings in scientific research indicate that environmental pollution is also preventing our children from reaching their full potential. Road traffic is one of the primary contributors to this pollution. The burning of fuels is also a big contribution to air pollution, in addition to the fact that transportation is a major source. For instance, the majority of the potentially lethal PM2.5 toxins that are produced in urban areas and big towns originate from sources such as coal fires and wood-burning stoves. Intolerance It is unusual to see individuals of different races congregating together in many places of the city, especially whites and Asians. Some residents of Bradford, particularly those who live in the city's more densely populated central neighbourhoods, have the misconception that any white person who strikes up a conversation with an Asian must be either a law enforcement officer, a drug user or a tourist who is hopefully disoriented. In the same vein, it is unusual to see Asians go to areas like Wharfdale, Ilkley, Worth Valley and Craven that are mostly inhabited by white people. According to the findings of a government investigation led by Dame Louise Casey in 2016, Bradford ranks among the worst reputations for divided schools in the nation. People of white and Asian descent in Bradford continue to live their lives apart. Moving into a new place and selecting the appropriate neighbourhood inside it for you or your family is not an easy decision. It is essential to have the complete picture in front of you. The aforementioned disadvantages of living in Bradford are not intended to cast a negative light on the historical city. Rather, they are presented as a straightforward reality to help people understand the problems better. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment and turn on the notification bell. This is Learning Canteen.